the title of the show is Epiphany, Serendipity, and Synchronicity, Illustrations of the Human Condition. And it's very, uh, the, the title is very specific to it because uh, it's, it's about a couple of things that kind of happened when, when uh, the show was happening, like um, the idea of, of epiphany, it's just kind of uh, inspiration coming from a, from a greater source. Um, serendipity is making discoveries by accident, and synchronicity was another one of uh, Jung's theories, I think, about the idea that nothing kind of happens accidentally and that you're going to repeat things and learn lessons from things. I actually drew the first kind of concept sketch for this show back in March 2005. And uh, I've got it here. 24th of March 2005. The Martyr. So what I took as a starting point was uh, Carl Jung's archetypes. The self, the anima, the child, the, or the hero, the trickster, the mother, the warrior, um, the shadow, the animus, the superman, the sage, the martyr, the father, and the lover. And uh, I started kind of... Um, looking at iconography and things like that so I, I just took it as a, a kind of springboard and I started adding my own um, ideas to it so I have a lot of kind of concept work I was looking at, at kind of uh, human fears and things like that I'll show you the, uh, the finished painting of the scarecrow that was him That's another one dealing with uh, human fears, that's uh, death. And uh, I rather poetically tell you little dish, Memento Mori Mask, or Memento Mori Mask, I should say. So they're all the finished paintings, and I finished all them back in about uh, June of last year. And uh, one was in a show in Limerick, and then um, the Scarecrow and the Death Face painting were in um, Aigsha, the, uh, I was in the Emerging the Emerging Artists Exhibition up in Carlo. It's uh, hard to create art in a vacuum, and uh, I enjoy having visitors up to the studio and things like that. But uh, I also enjoy having other artists up and, and getting their kind of uh, feedback on, on how things are going and things like that. And um, I find other artists really inspirational, their work. So, a good friend of mine, Connor Harrington, he, uh, he's an uh, emerging artist over in London now. But he began in this um, real kind, kind of urban graffiti vein. So his work now that he's working on is um, fine art, oils, and aerosols, you know, these kind of two really opposing elements, the urban and their traditional kind of uh, coming together on the canvas. <laughs> planning on doing a self-portrait for this show but they never kind of materialized so in a way what I was doing was um, when representing the archetypes I was representing parts of myself in each of the paintings so um, I introduced other things into the uh, into the show like um, this for instance now is, is from literature it was based on an Edgar Allan Poe uh, short story called The Man That Was Used Up and um, his story wasn't exactly uh, about a kind of pure person or anything like that, but this was uh, based on a kind of time in my life when I worked in a, in a job where a lot was um, expected of me and I, I gave a lot of myself and uh, I, I didn't get a lot in return. So I took the uh, the title The Man Who Was Used Up and I just took it as a springboard again, a starting point for, uh, for my own idea. Just um, represented all these hands as this kind of unseen force coming out of this darkness just literally taking and taking and taking until there's nothing left this is another painting that wasn't exactly inspired by the um the archetypes but was something that i thought fit in 
and um, it's just called All the Way to the World, and it's about a friend of mine who, uh, who literally has a lot of weight in his shoulder every time that I meet him, he's in, he's in some type of trouble, so um, I, uh, I try to uh, represent that idea in a real physical way. So what we did was we, um, when we were setting this up, we took a, we took a bag and filled the bag up with weights and uh, I'm gonna strip off because he's, he's got a body to use. So we, uh, we, we kind of uh, tried to represent him as this real um, kind of sinewy, muscular uh, force again. So the bag was full of weights. He was getting kind of pulled and what's interesting with this is that uh, I, I took it from a really low angle of picture. So proportionately, this hand is huge and warped, but it just kind of works. So that was it. And then when I painted it, I kind of uh, really surprised myself because it really reminded me of a kind of Christ-like pose. So um, I went away and I just kind of uh, painted a, a halo around his, his head. I decided to kind of challenge myself um, by painting the, uh, the scarecrow, uh, the kind of Memento Mori mask painting, and this as well. Um, I rarely kind of use other people's images, but this was something I found on the net and it uh, was representing another kind of idea that I, I've been kind of dealing with for, for years and years. The idea that sh when you see something initially, you think it's something, but it's actually something else. So I was going back to real kind of um, childhood uh, fears. So what this was for me was um, I found this picture on the net of uh, pants pocket torn inside out. It looks like some type of crow monster. So I, I had an eye, a beak, uh, this is the hinge of the mouth, and it was wearing a, a shirt. And that was my reaction to it. It's kind of the, the most abstract painting in this whole show. Um, this is another work in progress, and uh, it was another one of the, the original Jungian archetypes. It's uh, the martyr. So what I took the martyr to mean was um, uh, I was actually named after Saint Stephen, who was a very famous martyr who kind of died for his beliefs. So when I was uh, kind of thinking about the image, I took the martyr to mean a person who was really you know holding on to their beliefs despite everything. So I kind of put her up on a pedestal, and I, I, I very specifically chose a female for this because uh, I, I thought that it just had a really kind of quiet, contemplative, uh, you know, feeling to it that only a, a woman could kind of get across. So. Um, this, this is just a little sketchbook, it hasn't been painted in properly yet, but just kind of represents her beliefs and what she's holding on to. And uh, something that I did with this painting was I decided to work it into a series. So this is the other half of the series, just one of two. And uh, it's the damsel in distress. So it's kind of a, a very, very polar opposite idea to the martyr. The martyr kind of gives themselves willingly, but the damsel in distress is somebody who's just, you know, suffering and uh, helplessness, you know, that's kind of what they represent. Other 
visual medium of it. And um, when I first encountered um, a work by Stephen Murphy in the Army School of Art and Design, um, you know, that particular image that he had painted depicting a very sort of order, a very mundane subject in a way, um, not only had a powerful appeal, not only for the quality of his painting, but also because um, it was obvious that this talented young painter had he, he just captured a moment in time. And that moment of time really lasts for all time because I can vividly remember that particular image. Um, I believe that all good art, either it be painting or it be sculpture, is really based on the ability to be able to copy faith, i.e. to be able to draw. And if painting is someone's chosen discipline, um, it's only then that they can really be able to diversify. I mean, for example, people who would be knowledgeable about, uh, about art would be familiar with the huge Picasso that's in uh, New York, the, uh, the Avignon painting, as they call it, uh, depicting the brothel uh, figures in, from that particular part of France. You know, it's one of the obvious uh, creations of the 20th century, in a way. But still, um, I'm not a great fan of Cubism, but there's absolutely no doubt about it that this painting could not have been constructed by anybody who did not have uh, the ability of depicting the human form as it is initially. Um, I believe Stephen Murphy has that natural talent, and but fortunately he can go in any direction that he chooses. Um, but it's obvious in his art that he also enjoys the what I describe as probably the sensuous engagement with his materials. Enjoys the actual process of creating. And from that, I assume the satisfaction and the fulfillment that comes with the um, Epiphany, serendipity, synchronicity, illustrations of the human condition. I mean, which is of course the title of this exhibition. But it also tells us about Stephen Murphy, Stephen Murphy's own condition, and that condition being that he has unveiled to us tonight an exhibition of his work, the work of a talented and I believe an outstanding young painter. Um, I would ask you to join me in a round of applause and recognition. Of this.